Good evening, and welcome to evening prayer from the Episcopal Church of the Holy Apostles in Hoover, Alabama. We will begin this evening on page 115 in the Book of Common Prayer. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand, I shall not fall. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun, and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. <clears throat> the psalm appointed for this evening is Psalm 18, beginning in verse 21. The Lord rewarded me because of my righteous dealing. Because my hands were clean, he rewarded me. For I have kept the ways of the Lord and have not offended against my God. For all his judgments are before my eyes and his decrees I have not put away from me. For I have been blameless with him and have kept myself from iniquity. Therefore, the Lord rewarded me according to my righteous dealing because of the cleanness of my hands in his sight. With the faithful you show yourself faithful, O God. With the forthright you show yourself forthright. With the pure you show yourself pure, but with the crooked you are wily. You will save a lowly people, but you will humble the haughty eyes. You, O Lord, are my lamp, my God, you make my darkness bright. With you I will break down an enclosure. With the help of my God I will scale any wall. As for God, his ways are perfect. The words of the Lord are tried in the fire. He is a shield to all who trust in him. For who is God but the Lord? Who is the rock except our God? It is God who girds me about with strength and makes my way secure. He makes me sure-footed like a deer and lets me stand firm on the heights. He trains my hands for battle and my arms for bending even a bow of bronze. You have given me your shield of victory. Your right hand also sustains me. Your loving care makes me great. You lengthen my stride beneath me, and my ankles do not give way. I pursue my enemies and overtake them. I will not turn back till I have destroyed them. I strike them down, and they cannot rise. They fall defeated at my feet. You have girded me with strength for the battle. You have cast down my adversaries beneath me. You have put my enemies to flight. I destroy those who hate me. Then cry out, but they cry out, but there is none to help them. 
They cry to the Lord, but he does not answer. I beat them like small dust before the wind. I trample them like mud in the streets. You deliver me from the strife of the peoples. You put me at the head of the nations. A people I have not known shall serve me. No sooner shall they hear than they shall obey me. Strangers will cringe before me. The foreign peoples will lose heart. They shall become trembling out of their strongholds. The Lord lives. Blessed is my rock. Exalted is the God of my salvation. He is the God who gives me victory and casts down the peoples beneath me. You rescued me from the fury of my enemies. You exalted me above those who rose against me. You saved me from my deadly foe. Therefore, I will extol you among the nations, O Lord, and sing praises to your name. He multiplies the victories of his king. He shows loving kindness to his anointed, to David and his descendants forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Deuteronomy chapter 3. At that time I charged you as follows. Although the Lord your God has given you this land to occupy, all your troops shall cross over armed as the vanguard of your Israelite kin. Only your wives, your children, and your livestock, I know that you have much livestock, shall stay behind in the towns that I have given to you. When the Lord gives rest to your kindred as to you, and they too have occupied the land that the Lord your God is giving them beyond the Jordan, then each of you may return to the property that I have given to you. And I charged Joshua as well at that time, saying, Your own eyes have seen everything that the Lord your God has done to these two kings. So the Lord will do to all the kingdoms into which you are about to cross. Do not fear them, for it is the Lord your God who fights for you. <clears throat> At that time, too, I entreated the Lord, saying, O Lord God, you have only begun to show your servant your greatness and your might. What God in heaven or on earth can perform deeds and mighty acts like yours? Let me cross over to see the good land beyond the Jordan, the good hill country and the Lebanon. But the Lord was angry with me on your account and would not heed me. The Lord said to me, Enough from you. Never speak to me of this matter again. Go up to the top of Pisgah and look around you to the west, to the north, to the south, and to the east. Look well, for you shall not cross over this Jordan, but charge Joshua and encourage and strengthen him, because it is he who shall cross over at the head of his people and who shall, who shall secure their possession of the land that you will see. Here ends the reading. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. For behold, darkness covers the land, deep gloom enshrouds the peoples. But over you the Lord will rise, and his glory will appear upon you. Nations will stream to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawning. Your gates will always be open. By day or night they will never be shut. They will call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Violence will no more be heard in your land, ruin or destruction within your borders. You will call your walls salvation and all your portals praise. The sun will no more be your light by day. By night you will not need the brightness of the moon. The Lord will be your everlasting light and your God will be your glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Romans, chapter 9. You will say to me, then, why then does he still find fault? For who can resist his will? But who indeed are you, a human being, to argue with God? 
will what is molded say to the one who molds it why have you made me like this has the potter no right over the clay to make out of the same lump one object for special use and another for ordinary use what if god desiring to show his wrath and to make known his power has endured with much patience the objects of wrath that are made for destruction and what if he has done so in order to make known the riches of his glory for the objects of mercy, which he has prepared beforehand for glory, including us whom he has called, not from the Jews but only, but also from the Gentiles. As indeed he says in Hosea, Those who are not my people I will call my people, and her who was not beloved I will call beloved. And in the very place where it was said to them, You are not my people, there they shall be called children of the living God. And Isaiah cries out concerning Israel, Though the number of the children of Israel were like the sand of the sea, only a remnant of them will be saved. For the Lord will execute his sentence on the earth quickly and decisively. And as Isaiah predicted, if the Lord of hosts had not left survivors to us, we would have fared like Sodom and been made like Gomorrah. What then are we to say? Gentiles who did not strive for righteousness have attained it, that is righteousness through faith. But Israel who did strive for the righteousness that is based on the law did not succeed in fulfilling that law. Why not? because they did not strive for it on the basis of faith, but as if it were based on works. They have stumbled over the stumbling stone, as it is written, See, I am laying in Zion a stone that will make people stumble, a rock that will make them fall, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. Here ends the reading. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Matthew chapter 24. As Jesus came out of the temple and was going away, his disciples came to point out to him the buildings of the temple. Then he asked them, You see all these, do you not? Truly I tell you, not one stone will be left here upon another. All will be thrown down. When he was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when will this be, and what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? Jesus answered them, Beware that no one leads you astray. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Messiah, and they will lead many astray. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not alarmed. For this must take place, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All this is but the beginning of the birth pangs. Then they will hand you over to be tortured, and will put you to death. And you will be hated by all nations because of my name. Then many will fall away. And they will betray one another and hate one another. And many false prophets will arise and lead many astray. And because of the increase of lawlessness, the love of many will grow cold. 
but anyone who endures to the end will be saved. And this good news of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the world as a testimony to all the nations, and then the end will come. Here ends the reading. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, we entreat you, O Lord, that your holy angels may lead us in paths of peace and goodwill. We entreat you, O Lord, that we may be pardoned and forgiven for our sins and offenses. We entreat you, O Lord, that there may be peace to your church and to the whole world. We entreat you, O Lord, that we may depart this life in your faith and fear and not be condemned before the great judgment seat of Christ. We entreat you, O Lord, that we may be bound together by your Holy Spirit in the communion of all your saints, entrusting one another and all our life to Christ. We entreat you, O Lord. O oh God, you have taught us to keep all your commandments by loving you and our neighbor. Grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit, that we may be devoted to you with our whole heart and united to one another with pure affection, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus, Stay with us, for evening is at hand and the day is past. Be our companion in the way, kindle our hearts, and awaken hope, that we may know you as you are revealed in Scripture in the breaking of bread. Grant this for the sake of your love. Amen. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ. Give rest to the weary, bless the dying, soothe the suffering, pity the afflicted, shield the joyous, and all for your love's sake. Amen. I invite you to pause the recording now and offer your own prayers of intercession and thanksgiving, but return for the general thanksgiving. general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks. 
for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen.